Thank you, Rachel. And now back to Lindsay to talk about who's a Jew, an introduction to a surprisingly complex issue. Yes. And no doubt uh, <laughs> my colleagues here are thinking, oh my God, she drew the short straw. Uh, <laughs> Jewish identity is possibly one of the most contentious subjects, particularly among Jews, uh, that exist. And I'm not going to be able to give you a nice formula. First of all, it depends very much on where you're coming from and who you are as to the answer or the answers you might give to the question, who is a Jew? And perhaps uniquely, except possibly for Zoroastrians, um, ethnicity and religion are inseparable in the case of Judaism. Uh, of course, there are people who convert to Judaism, but they, in a way, are the, the metaphors used for conversion are those of adoption into a family. A convert's parents uh, symbolically become Abraham and Sarah. So they are adoptees rather than um, converts. And the process of conversion uh, in certainly the Orthodox and the Masority movements, and I think Reformed, I'm not quite sure, it varies from country to country, involves immersion in a ritual bath, which is very symbolic of rebirth. So you get birthed into the Jewish people upon conversion, and uh, you acquire a new ethnic identity, perhaps. So it's very, very hard to separate out, these, separate out these strands, and it's very hard to fit Judaism into a Western conception of what is a religion, and hence all the problems. If we were looking at it from a different perspective, it would look very, very natural, but from a modern perspective, um, it's not, and it's constantly the source of argumentation. So the first uh, factors are external, uh, in some sense, uh, external stroke, internal. And they are, for instance, uh, the denominational ideas of Jewish identity and the criteria for Jewish identity. And right here we have the problems that start. So Orthodox Jews will consider anyone born of a Jewish mother or converted according to the correct Orthodox rabbinic court. And believe you me, there are arguments of which ones are valid and which aren't. They are, const uh, they are Jewish. Uh, this is simplifying matters to a little extent. Um, in the ultra-Orthodox world, most non-ultra-Orthodox rabbinic courts are not considered sufficient, so converts that Orthodox, but not non-ultra-Orthodox people might accept, might not be accepted in the ultra-Orthodox world. Moving leftwards to the Masority movement, uh, they would certainly accept the Orthodox converts, but their own converts might not be accepted by the Orthodox. And once again, if we move left again to the Reform and, in this country, the liberal world, Converts made via those means, uh, those courts might not be accepted by movements to the right of them. In addition, the reform movement has also adopted a paternal or patrilineal definition of Judaism that says if your father is Jewish, you are Jewish too. And that wouldn't be accepted in the Orthodox world, the ultra-Orthodox world, and I think the majority world, probably. No, yeah. So um, you can see right there, within the Jewish world, there's a huge spectrum as to who is Jewish and who is not. Um, the, uh, the, the, other, the other end of the process, of course, is leaving Judaism, uh, which surprisingly, perhaps, and counterintuitively, in the Orthodox world is impossible to do. If you do adopt another religion, they would still regard you as legally Jewish, leading to a very interesting uh, uh, type case, perhaps, in the 1950s, when a Jewish uh, man called Oswald Rufeisen, who had been sheltered by monks during the Holocaust, had uh, converted to Catholicism and eventually, in the course of time, become a monk, uh, what he considered a proud Jewish Catholic monk, and sought to immigrate to Israel under the law of return, which says that all Jews are eligible for uh, immigration to Israel. And there was a whopping great big court case. Uh, the Orthodox, strangely enough, said, well, he's Jewish. Uh, the secular people in Israel said, well, no, he's not. He's become a Catholic. The Orthodox replied, well, you can't stop being Jewish. You know, This is a minor matter that he's a Catholic. Uh, so <laughs> and uh, I think the upshot was he was not allowed to, but he was allowed to apply for citizenship and did spend the rest of his life in Israel as an Israeli citizen, but not on the grounds of the law of return. But that was a secular definition that was imposed. So here we have another aspect, which is what about secular definitions of Judaism? And many, many people are atheist or members of other religions, but still regard themselves very happily as Jewish and see no particular contradiction. Uh, so that complicates matters enormously. Um, a, a, a very major question would be Jews for Jesus, uh, a movement of which you might be aware. And uh, not all Jews would accept members of Jews for Jesus as Jewish. 
Uh, some would, some wouldn't. Um, some would actually point to the view that the definition of Jews for Jesus of Jews differs from the orthodox definition of Jews. So we have there yet another complication upon a complica uh, complication. We have many people who consider themselves Jewish culturally. And you can be a very high-functioning member of the Jewish community, uh, never set foot in a synagogue, uh, be a proclaimed and happy atheist, and still be intensely, intensely Jewish. So this complicates matters as well. We then have the government getting involved, or various governments or non-Jewish official bodies getting involved. Uh, notoriously, the Nazis considered as Jewish anyone who had a, a Jewish grandparent, so uh, that what they... What, anyone who had a quarter Jewish heritage was Jewish to the Nazis. And in the wake of the Holocaust, there have been calls from various sections of the Jewish community to adopt that definition merely as an answer to Hitler to say, fine, if you thought those people were Jewish, we will embrace them. Uh, other people would say, why should we adopt Hitler's definitions and allow him to define who is Jewish? We also have state bodies. For instance, uh, the Soviet Union defined as Jews anyone who had a Jewish father, or obviously mother or both. And many people ended up with Jew as nationality in their Soviet-era passports who would not have been considered Jewish by most Jewish communities around the world. A very interesting case actually happened recently in the, uh, in the Jewish educational system in this country. It was actually the first court uh, case heard by the, Supreme, uh, the new Supreme Court. And that was the case of admission to JFS, the Jews' Free School, which is uh, the oldest surviving Jewish school in this country. I think it goes back to 1792, 17 something. And uh, it's about 2,000 strong. It's the biggest Jewish school in Europe. And it is under the authority of the chief rabbi. So orthodox definitions of Jewishness prevail. Orthodox, Masority, Reform, Liberal, Secular, and Atheist Jews attend, but their Jewish identity is defined by the orthodox. This meant that children of converts who were not accepted by the Orthodox, though they might be very pious, very observant, were not accepted to the school. Uh, this, the, uh, there was a challenge from, uh, from uh, the parents of a child who didn't fit the definition. The matter went to various courts. It ended up in the Supreme Court. And the government, interestingly, or the court, ruled a completely new definition of Jewishness, was, which was essentially, if you attend a synagogue, then you are Jewish enough to attend a school. So having uh, provoked the, or having defended the court case in order to maintain an orthodox and traditional definition of Jewish identity, the school then found themselves with a externally, secularly, legally, government-backed definition of Jewishness that had, was not very recognizable to Jews. So the current, uh, the current rules are you have to sign up, which was a terrible shock to many secular and atheist people who thought, why couldn't their kids go to a Jewish school? Why do they have to go to synagogue for, but now have to, in order to gain the correct number of attendances to be allowed to apply for the school? This is one of the more, um, should we say, quixotic and Alice in the Wonderland-like um, situations completely brought on by different definitions of what is Jewish identity. I haven't actually mentioned self identifying, but that's an incredibly important factor because there is also an element in Jews are people who decide they're Jews. Uh, so that also in includes people who might convert to other religions and no longer concern, uh, can consider themselves as Jewish. They might be Jewish in the eyes of rabbis or the Israeli immigration authorities, but they might not be Jewish in their own eyes. And every combination you can think of are all these factors. So the question, who is a Jew, is impossible to answer unless you define your stance, the stance of the person whose identity is being considered, the stance of the government under which the person whose identity is being considered lives, and a couple of other factors probably, including the attitude of the person concerned. Uh, once you get all those together, you might get a yes, yes, yes down the list. You might get a yes, yes, no, yes, yes. And this means it's uh, very hard to count Jews as well. Uh, for the first time ever, I think it was the last census had the religion question for the first time ever. It was the last one, the one before. And uh, nobody quite knows on what basis people were answering it. So we still have no idea how many Jews are on the UK. I think the, the accepted figure is somewhere around 250,000, but who really knows? Um, maybe it's more because people weren't ticking it for various reasons. Maybe it's fewer because people were ticking it who wouldn't have been accepted by anyone else. So it's almost impossible to count Jews um, and very unpredictable as to who they might be. Uh, where does this leave Jews? Uh, well, in a muddle. Um, in a constant and muddle that becomes habitual. 
uh, I think actually instead of provoking more self-reflection, it possibly means that people rely less on reflection and uh, totting up and definition, but they just tend to adopt one or two identity markers or identity definitions and say, we'll go with that. So you will find people within the community who will hear about somebody at the moment, they say, oh, well, the mouth's not Jewish. Oh, well, they're not Jewish. And they'll find other people who are very accepting. So again, attitudes towards all those markers vary on where you are, who you are, and again, don't necessarily correlate with denomination either. Um, what does one do with this situation? I have no idea at all. It's a minefield. Uh, but if it ever comes up in any context, you have to try and find out or define or accept definitions of, bear it in mind. Uh, there's no good, not going to be a right answer. And should there be a right answer? I'm not sure. When uh, we step back from this appalling muddle I've just outlined to you, uh, what do we get? We get a question that goes right back to the roots of what are we defining for and whose system are we using? So we are talking about a variety of externally imposed or Western aligned definitions of what it means to have a particular identity. They don't really map on to certainly traditional understandings of what that identity might be at all. It is a clash of systems, a clash of ways of defining things. Uh, this probably uh, applies in many other contexts of different religions that aren't Christianity. Because when we come down to it, the Western system of definition of religion and religious identity is very much based on Christianity. So part of the problem with Jewish identity is it's based on a system that derives from Christian identification. And the identification of faith identity for Christians is extremely, extremely different and has very, very little to do with ethnicity or family. Uh, it is far more an individual acceptance of a belief system. Um, so... When talking about Jewish identity, you'd really have to keep this in mind and never expect Jews to be homogenous because it, as many as types of definition of identity as they are, there are types of defining of how to practice that Judaism that you might or might not have. And you cannot really um, say that somebody who has never darkened the doors of the synagogue in their life is a total atheist, eats what they like, uh, but is a passionate advocate of the revival of Yiddish and um, politically active, for instance, uh, in supporting Israel. Uh, they, you can't really say they are less Jewish than somebody who spends their entire time learning Talmud, uh, fulfills every requirement of the most uh, strict interpretation of ultra-Orthodox applications of, of law and uh, never ventures outside the Jewish community. Which one is more Jewish? You can't really say. Uh, Jews themselves, you heard um, Rachel say that when she went to the... Uh, where was it? You, you said every Jew that crossed the doors uh, said, "I'm not a Marsha House." Yes, I'm not a proper Jew. I'm, I'm not this. I'm not that. So this confusion about identity and what it means to be a good Jew has, in a way, seeped in, and it's very difficult to find people who feel they are good Jews. Maybe the most self-satisfied among us. This is perhaps no bad thing, and maybe it's not the worst thing in the world to live with fluctuating ideas of identity. Uh, because perhaps we should be challenging ourselves a bit more. Perhaps we should be saying, what does it mean to be Jewish? What is it? Um, is it just down to who bore who, who was which court converted who? Or do we go beyond that? Do we go beyond that to a way of life, uh, an espousal of certain values? Um, can we reduce it to mechanics? Or is it something deeper than that? Do we want it to be deeper than that? So constantly asking these questions, constantly being in, a, in a, what I hope is a creative tension with them, certainly makes Jewish life very interesting, very complex, very argumentative, but I'm ultimately hoping that it also gives rise to a creativity and a constructive self-reflexivity Then the end is of benefit to all of us. Um, maybe that's the ideal and not exactly what we see in practice, but hey, it exists, let's celebrate it, and I hope we can all take it to a higher level that will actually produce constructive thinking, constructive uh, ties and a wider embrace of anyone who wants to be in. Thank you so much. I owe you all a massive.